Hello, and welcome to my Creating the Constitution Target Display Project for History. The first American form of government were the Articles of Confederation. It established basic functions of the new American government after gaining independence from Great Britain. The Articles could do so many things, like declare war, make peace, establish an army or navy, and sign treaties. But with many advantages comes with many disadvantages. It couldn't control trade within the states, it had no system of federal courts, it had difficulty with passing laws because nine of the 13 states needed to approve legislation and tyranny lurked among the states. Later on, the Constitutional Convention came to solve these problems with an eye towards the future. of the Federal or Constitutional Convention was to express reasons why the Articles of Confederation had to be revised. This occurred with a set of arguments on two arguing sides, in this case named Side 1 and Side 2. The first issue with the Articles was government power. Should there be a new constitution with a stronger national government, or should the delegates revise the Articles and keep the states going strong? Side 1 said that they should get rid of the, the Articles and establish a new government, while building a strong national government. Stide 2 said that they should revise the articles and keep the power between the states. The final result was to make the national government more powerful in certain areas. issue was solved next, representation. How should the representation of the states in Congress be determined? The first side, better known as the Virginia Plan, said that the states should be represented by the population or people, while the New Jersey Plan stated that every state must be equal. Both Virginia and New Jersey plans came to a conclusion that senators should represent the states and representatives are based on the population. This final compromise was named the Hamilton Plan. election of Congress. How should the members of Congress be selected? Side 1 wanted the state government to elect the representatives, and Side 2 said that the people should elect the members of Congress because the members represent the people. The results came to be that the Senate is chosen by the legislative and the House of Representatives are chosen by the people. argument was on the executive. Should there be more than one? What kind of powers should they possess? Side 1 claimed that there should be only one executive. Side 2 disagreed, thinking that there should be more than one executive. The results were that the president and vice president and cabinet would be checked by different branches and are chosen by the electoral college. slavery had to be fixed. Simply, side one said that they should keep slavery, and side two said that they should get rid of it. They resolved it with, we are keeping slaves until the Civil War. Slaves should be counted as three-fifths of a full person. Isn't that odd? Wow, weren't those five arguments a mouthful? Well, in the end, both sides came to conclusions that mostly fit each side's wants and sometimes needs. After the convention, there was controversy over the ratification of the Constitution. Being more specific, after signing the Constitution on September 17, 1787, 
Over the next 10 months, the document had to be approved by 9 of the 13 states in order to become law. States such as Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut, Georgia, and Massachusetts ratified the document, while the other developed two groups, named the Federalists, or ones wanting to ratify the Constitution, and the Anti-Federalists, the ones that were against ratifying the Constitution. The strongest argument behind this important debate was if we needed a Bill of Rights, Anti-Federalists, or don't need it, Federalists. The Federalists ignored the Bill of Rights idea, wanted to tyrannize America, wanted the national government to protect the citizens' rights so amply to guarantee the citizens' loyalty and support. They wanted a stone executive branch and separate branches to fit people's interests. They also believed that if we listed rights by creating the Bill of Rights, the more we lose them. The Anti-Federalists were less prepared coming into the convention but had ideas like we shouldn't have a strong national government, but a controlled national government that is not as powerful as the Confederation. They thought that the government's powers are general and vague, almost granting them unlimited power, and the Bill of Rights would quiet the fear of having rights taken away. The Constitution gives the government too much power at the expense of state governments, and lastly, the Federalists wanted to have tyranny and want all the power for themselves. With all these grand arguments, an expected compromise occurred, granting both sides their wishes in exchange. The final compromise said by the Anti-Federalists was that if we add a Bill of Rights, we will ratify the Constitution. from learning about history and reflect on why we should learn about American history. You may not expect to hear this with having little knowledge of the government, but it revolves around us. With everything we do, some part of it belongs to the government. Driving, fishing, swimming, running, walking, sleeping, eating, you name it, the government enlists a powerful law system to allow us to do what we want under relatable and certain circumstances. If it wasn't for the government, you may have not been here today. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new.